through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 205. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of <clears throat> Anna Karenina. It's a lot of uh, and then I wrote it right. <laughs> I like the I like the rhythm to it. It's Is kinda... that really it? Karenina, Karenina, Anna Karenina, Anna Karenina. I just I like saying yeah, Anna Karenina. Again. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Anyway, we're going to talk about Jude Law, a guy who I have an interesting sort of perception of. Hmm. You know, I sort of look at him. His early years is sort of similar to. Maybe Cameron Diaz or Charlize Theron, where they're more okay. of like a pretty face, mm -hmm. and I didn't really look at them as like an acting talent. I and gradually, as their careers went on, I began to respect them more and more as actors and not just that. like models mm -hmm. acting, sort yes. of like that. Yes. And you know, he's definitely one for that for me. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Let's start a ways back though. Yeah. Nineties. Gattaca. Yeah. We're talking the Andrew Nichols story about i mean genetics and mm -hmm. um eugenics eugenics sort mm -hmm. of pick the discrimination of people based upon their genetic yes. makeup you know the whole purebred mm -hmm. sort of concept mm -hmm. which he then revisits again within time yes. almost a very very similar yes. sort of which is film yeah not that great not not that great but yeah. this one this one's a lot more fun yes you, know, you got I ethan hawk and uma thurman mm -hmm. sort of I, I don't know if they fell in love they after did. the no, after, during this movie. During this movie, during okay, the filming up. This is when they became a couple. Which makes sense because they have great chemistry in yes. the movie. It's essentially a story of uh, Ethan Hawke's character who is a natural birth whose mm -hmm. genetic makeup hasn't been played with, and sort of he suffers discrimination behind that. Yes, he meets. Jude Law, mm -hmm. who is essentially a purebred guy, much better genetic code. But you know he has depression issues, mm -hmm. and as part of that, you know he tries to kill himself. Jude Law sort of kind of helps him out, mm -hmm. gives him his genetic code mm -hmm. so that he can live yes. the life he's always wanted to so live. He can pose as a pure blood, and you know nevertheless. Things quirky. go awry. Yes, as people <laughs> begin to question whether he's truly pure blood, if yes. he's going to be able to go on this lunar or outer space mission yes, that he's that's desiring right. to go on, whether he can actually, you know, have this love life with mm -hmm. Uma Thurman, who is a pure blood. That's right. Yeah. So it's 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 a very very well done movie. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's kind of interesting in the sense that like in time was much more of sort of a thriller type adventure movie. Yes, this is much more I think emotional. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's it's really not like an action movie yeah, in the yeah. much in the way that something like much, In Time is. Yeah. This is much more of a drama, yeah, than classic sci-fi drama where. But it's done yeah. incredibly well. I mean, it's kind of amazing to think that there weren't really many nominations to the film except hmm, really? art design, which is kind of a shame. But you yeah. know, it's when, it's well done. When it was first released uh, as part of the marketing campaign, there were adverts for people to call in and have their children genetically engineered. Huh. And wow. uh, thousands of people called in, really? wanting to actually have their offspring genetically Whoa. altered. <laughs> I mean, it's it seems inevitable that this is the way we're going to head, whether it's right or wrong. It's been talked wrong. about for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it seems that's the way we're going to go. At but... some point, it'll enter into the discussion more than it is now. And let's just hope it doesn't go the way of Gattaca, because I will be screwed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All us glasses wearers are yeah, exactly. out we're of screwed. luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's a, it's a good one. It's mm -hmm, definitely, mm -hmm. a, definitely an interesting part for Jude Law. It's, he's had yes. a really interesting career of, like, good guys, bad guys, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff. And this is sort of one of the more interesting... He's good, but he's a confused guy, yeah. and that's yeah. what well, I like about him. Mm -hmm, definitely. Emotionally in turmoil, or yeah. tumultuous. Yeah. Let's jump uh, forward a couple years to 1999's Existence mm -hmm. from David Cronenberg. Yes. This is pretty much a classic Cronenbergian <laughs> film, which sort of... <laughs> nice, I like that. Challenges that the concept of perception and yeah. reality. Mm -hmm. uh, the story of a video game designer played by Jennifer Jason mm -hmm. Lee, who... Turn, who originally was going to be an Eyes Wide Shut, but due to the production of this movie, really? her part was recast. Interesting. Who creates this video game as part of her company's mm -hmm. sort of creation of this 
I don't know what you want, virtual reality, yeah. alternate it's a, world. Yeah, essentially they're advertising a virtual reality by giving these people a sneak peek into it. And it's sort of Matrix-like in yes. that you plug into it. I mean, with physical yes. contraptions attached to your body. Mm -hmm. And you have her company, the opposing company, who sort of like, they battle back against mm -hmm. each other. And then you have like realists, who are people yes. who refuse to get plugs put into themselves mm -hmm. and stuff like this. And Jude Law... And sort of, I mean, the the whole film is kind of complex and sort of like <laughs> what is real, what is yes. not in in, in the video was games. Out as of it the was video. complex, yes. And Jude Law sort of plays a helper of mm -hmm. hers who, when things sort of go awry within the game, kind of as a subject of the uh, turning points, I guess. Or yes, of the plot. She, she, he sort of tries to help her get everything back mm -hmm. in track, correct the, the problems with the yes. program that exist, and it's sort of like, classic, like, who, er, people who are perceived to be one side are mm -hmm. actually another yeah. side, and everyone's playing Who is each good, other. who's bad, what's real, yeah. what isn't, very There's a little, much, there's a little yeah. bit too much of the, the everyone... I would agree that there's a bit too change. much. Uh, and, this is, I love Cronenberg, but this is one of my least favorite of his, um, not a huge fan of this film. Yeah. I think, it, I think this is, uh, I think a lot of times Cronenberg, uh, does well by just kind of making weird things and not trying to overly explain them. And I think this film is more the other side where I feel like he's trying to overly explain things rather than let them just happen. Mm. And I think the over explaining kind of waters down the film. Yeah. I mean, I think the idea conceptually of like reality versus not inside a video oh, game yeah. I think is right I mean you think about things like the matrix it definitely no, I really works liked well, it conceptually I just didn't like the way they ended up actually handling it. it there's just a little bit too much of the in and out yes. that it begins to it, like it's it's not even so much like the thought process of like the matrix of like which do you choose yeah. which I think is interesting it's sort of just like almost like a shell game of them trying yes. to trick you into yes. which like where are they uh -huh. now where are they very, now very where are they now so, yeah. and, and like that's okay but it just feels a little bit more gimmicky to me yeah. ultimately and after the first few times you're kind of like all right can we just know what's actually going on now yeah um i think it's interesting that two of the producers of the film were hungarian which is only mm -hmm. interesting in the sense that uh it's not by chance that the letters x and z are capitalized mm -hmm. because the word in between in the title it's existence because isten. isten is a hungarian word which means god that's pretty cool. Kind of an interesting... That's cool. Like, I used to always just think it was random, stupid, like, yeah. bizarre Gen X wannabe uh -huh. capitalization. Uh, yeah. But it's That's good to know that there's an actual reason. Thank you. Makes sense with Cronenberg. At least, yeah, thank, it's but true. But i got to give a lot of credit for the casting of the movie. I mm. love this. This is a very well-cast indie. It's true. A lot of indie cred. Mm -hmm. You know, you got you got Jennifer Jason Lee and yes. Jude Law, but you also have, like, Ian Holm, mm -hmm. Willem Dafoe, That's right. Christopher Eccleston, Sarah Pauly. Like, there's a lot of great people, and it. it's just sort of a shame that it doesn't elevate that material it's true. more. So, yeah. You know, go back and watch a video drama instead. Oh, yeah, That's totally. Say, so. Yeah, or Naked Lunch. Yeah, any, yeah. any of that. Next up, we're going to talk about one of your favorites, mm -hmm. I believe. One mm -hmm. that you've talked about on this podcast yep. before. And that is 2001's Enemy at the Gate. Yes. This is the... It's it's based on true story, isn't it? Yeah, it r relatively speaking, all of the characters are actual people that okay. existed. This is the story of like a Russian sniper and yes. a German sniper who sort of play a game of cat and mouse yes, during over World the War II. Battle of Stalingrad. Yes. yes. This is from director Jean-Jacques Ono. Mm -hmm. who we've spoken about previously as I've really been a huge fan of his work with the, I don't know what you call them, pseudo uh, nature documentary type mm, things. Mm -hmm. so nature dramas with the bear, which yes. is much more of it, mm -hmm. where it's the story of an actual bear mm -hmm. sort of the bear cub. living. Yeah. But also Two Brothers, which is the story right. of two tiger Tigers. cubs yeah. who are separated, but there are a lot more people involved in that actual yes. storytelling. Guy um, Pierce, big right? fan of it. Yeah. yeah, Guy Pierce, exactly. Yeah. Freddie Highmore as well. Mm, that's right. Uh, I'm a big fan of his work, and you know, this is this is definitely a really interesting mm -hmm. departure from those type of films to go definitely. straight into a very dramatic film and a an action film. Yeah. A you know, a really heavy war drama. It's, yeah, it, it's really intense. And it's interesting because when they cast um, Ed Harris and Jude Law as the two opposing mm -hmm. characters, the two main characters, uh, most of their acting testing was done based on how much they could emote with their eyes because mm -hmm. there's many scenes 
that they're acting without speaking. So they're not just dead speaking silent. Lines. Yeah. I mean. And so it's a lot about just how much they could show emotion with their eyes, which I, I think is an interesting test of both actors' I, ability. I mean, I definitely, I mean, think when you think about Jude Law, he almost feels like, I hate to say frogish, <laughs> but it feels like he has very big <laughs> eyes. Like he really, his eyes really yes, feel prominent. Yes. And that seems like it would make perfect yes. sense why you would cast him. I for would a almost like say. This. In relation to the film we're about to talk, android-like eyes, large robotic yes. eyes. Oh, sure. I say. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's a very interesting film. I mean, you're yes. you're dealing with Russians and Nazis, which, in a lot of ways, you could argue are not two very positive groups. Yes. Even though the Russians are fighting the Nazis, yes, and even though still... both both roles are played by British actors, right? But you're also dealing with you know Stalin, yeah, mm-hmm. which is not necessarily <laughs> yeah. a we're good like, yeah, dude. Russia was on our side, but their leader was still... Like, they kind of just little like, little yeah, there's a lot of people yeah. doing sketchy things like this. I mean, you have really interesting characters. Rachel Inter- Weiss, I believe, also. Rachel Weiss, mm-hmm. Bob Hoskins. Oh, uh, that's right. Joseph Fiennes is sort of like oh, the... Yes. I know what you're calling him, the PR dude mm-hmm. for the Russian yes. sort of military, as well as sort of like, I, I would call him the traitor. Yeah. I mean, he's kind yeah. of tries to fuck yeah. Jude Law over. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, kind of... Vasily. Yes, he kind of becomes um, a better man at the mm, end once yes. he realizes what he's done. Or um, I think it's the f- interesting that it's, at the point it was made, it was the most expensive British film made. Really okay. interesting. With, uh, what about sixty-eight million? Yeah, right? yeah. Which I mean is pretty, if you think about it, pretty expensive for a movie that isn't really like super CG heavy or anything. Yeah, that's I mean, true. We're yeah. thinking two thousand one, so it's a pretty decent. And sadly, did not blow the box office out of the water no. but you yeah. know it's 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 a it's an interesting film and i mm-hmm. like the sort of tension the idea of like two snipers fighting against yeah. each other almost seems absurd in some ways because it's <laughs> yeah. sort of like you just sit around for long swaths of time yes. just doing nothing and vasily was a very famous russian sniper he he and the guy he was i forget the name is uh Zeit- Z- koenig. koenig yeah uh they try the german army tried to say that koenig hadn't died and he hadn't killed Vasily uh, hadn't killed him, but then they found a paper of it. It was interesting. Yeah, some really interesting historical stuff behind yeah. it. So, but solid, solid film. Mm-hmm. I definitely dig it. Same year, though, AI, mm-hmm. artificial intelligence. We're talking mm. the Steven Spielberg mm. um, robot drama, yeah. which stars Haley Joe Osment yes. as a I don't know what you call him, Android kid, yeah. kid Android, yeah, who served sort of like uh, kid robot during the <laughs> yeah exactly kid bot. Uh, during a sort of downturn in the population, yes. families are taking these kid robots and sort of compensate for their naturally born kids. Mm-hmm. Now his family ultimately does have a natural kid, which leads to sort of these tensions between Weird the children. Emotional turmoils. Which ultimately, you know, bumps <laughs> bumps Haley Joe Osmond's robot out and he's sort of sent into this world of like robots in the world mm-hmm. which has to deal with people who hate robots yep. he has to sort of fight for his life he be friends robots yes yeah, so yeah be friends uh was it gigolo joe yep which is jude, same, Law, yeah. jude law's character um yes gigolo joe mm-hmm. uh who sort of takes him under his wing yes. they sort of set out on this fantastical journey to find was it the purple fairy or whatever something like that from I pinocchio oh, yes, so he can be right. made into a real boy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. even though that's yeah nonsense he you know it's it's kind of a crazy story <laughs> i i i, I kind of i i like the idea mm-hmm. of robots and humans trying to learn how to coexist yes. in this sort of a non you know battlestar galactica version mm-hmm. or irobot yeah. where it's like Ultimately, the robots are like, yeah, yeah, or Terminator, any any sort of thing where the robots only only decide that they can kill us and we (laughs) we don't need to live. It's sort of interesting to have the humans be the ones to be like, fuck these robots, and the robots are kind of like totally just living. Yeah, I, 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 it's an interesting world, and definitely, I I like the idea. I don't know if I love the story. Something that I think might uh, explain to you maybe how the idea was so neat, but maybe the inception in the end wasn't done. Did you know that Stanley? Yeah. Stanley Kubrick worked on the project for I 12 do, yes. years. Yes, yes, yes. 12 years before his death, obviously. Mm-hmm. But along the way, he decided to let Steven Spielberg direct, mm-hmm. saying that it was closer to his sensibilities, probably thinking E.T., Close Encounters, that type of attitude. Yeah. Uh, the two collaborated for years, resulting in Kubrick giving Spielberg a complete treatment and lots of conceptual art for the film prior to his death. It's funny to think about it in that context, because I almost feel like it's more of... 
Kubrick sensibility than Spielberg. I mean, oh yeah, I I, just, I, it, I think in the end the way it came about was like I felt was more like Spielberg trying to do a Kubrick film. Yeah, no, absolutely, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, and it just it doesn't feel as um, natural. Yeah, like it, it kind of feels a little forced. Yeah, it, it and you you think about something like Minority Report or something oh, that yeah. came out within like a couple years. Yeah, I mean it's not like he couldn't do dark, awesome action or anything like no. that. It's over fu- crazy future, but. It's it's sort of like that concept of like understanding existence feels much more like a Kubrickian mm, Kubrickian yeah. idea <laughs> as opposed to like Spielberg. Like Spielberg sort of feels like I mean I guess you could argue you know that place in the world with things like Close Encounters and whatnot. But it just, I just think the way Spielberg handles it, Spielberg likes to handle more um, I don't know happier go lucky. Yeah, of, you know, more down earth, I guess. Yeah, and this That's and this and this is really years. like out there when you're dealing with like sex robots and stuff. Uh-huh. That just doesn't feel like Spielberg to me. Yeah. So interesting. I mean, also, one of the reasons that Kubrick waited for so long, by the way, is because he wanted the role of David Haley Joel Osment's character to be uh, actually played by a robot, like an IRL robot. Whoa. And so he was kind of probably waiting for technology and things like that. And they going. did a dinosaur. Yeah, no, Jurassic after Park. Jurassic Park was made, he decided, looked into using digital computer effects to create David. So at one, if he wouldn't have died, there might have been, it might have been the first jar, better Jar Jar. Yeah, it could have been. Or not first, but better. Should note, though, that uh, Jude Law was actually nominated for his performance of this for a Golden Globe. Not an Oscar, not an Oscar, mm-hmm. but he was nominated for uh, Best Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture Golden Globe. He is one of the most interesting things about the film. Yep. That's the nice thing to say about him talking about the AI. Yeah. <laughs> he, he lost, unfortunately, to Jim Broadbent for Iris. Mm. And Spielberg was nominated as well for the picture, but he lost to Robert Altman for Gosford Park. Yeah. So, you know. Something to be said about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's move forward though to yes. one of the more noteworthy moments of his career in terms of critical acclaim, mm-hmm. and that was 2003's *Cold Mountain* from director Anthony Minghella. Mm-hmm. And Anthony Minghella, I mean, in *Cold Mountain*, really, it's an okay very, movie. Very famous, very popular book. Very popular book. It's a lot of pressure to make it. You know, I would say it's a very popular movie as well. But the thing about it to me uh, is that mm. Anthony Minghella is a very critically acclaimed guy mm. because of his work on The English Patient. Yes, and that's this right. feels a lot like The English yes. Patient, just sort of thematically yes. to me. I can I can see that comparison easy. The the one way to describe this sort of film is a uh, it's about a World War Civil War soldier yes. who's pulled away from his Love, mm-hmm. like, like just home. as just as they're sort of you know getting into mm-hmm. it, he's pulled out for the Civil War, fight for the South, and ultimately you know he's receives a letter and he decides to uh, abandon. It's not abandon. A wall. Go a wall. Yeah, yeah. Sort of leave the army to go back to her. And mm-hmm. the film is sort of like it tells her story and his story cutting back and forth. Yes. But it's it sort of feels like the Odyssey. Mm, to me, I can see that. and sort of the sense that he meets all these sort of quirky characters yes, along his the way. Quest back, yeah. Yes, and you know, obviously, Renee Zellweger won yes. the Academy Award for Supporting Actress as the friend of uh, Nicole Kidman, mm-hmm. who's back home. But Jude Law was nominated for Best Actor. Hmm. Well, and I want to note though that the work of was it Anthony? Was it uh, uh, yes, Anthony Minkella mm-hmm. is. Uh, of significance because he had worked with Jula before on the talented Mr. Ripley. Ah, okay. He actually played the normal guy. Yes, was that's right. Uh, Green Leaf or whatever it is <laughs> Forget, in this yeah. movie who Ripley ends up killing yes. and taking over. But Jula was nominated for Best Supporting Actor for his work on the talented Mr. Ripley. So clearly working with Anthony yes. McKella has Smart been idea. fruitful for mm-hmm. Jude Law. Uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a fine work. He lost that year to Sean Penn for Mystic River. Uh-huh. And, you know, the film obviously is the same year as The Return of the King. So that yes. was crushing it at the Oscars. Yes. So this kind of sort of squeaked in mostly on acting nominations. Gotcha. But, you know, it's it's okay. It, it has its place. And, you know, I, I'm not overly <sighs> fond of it. I, I think an interesting thing, and this is one of those problems when you're trying to convert a book to a movie, especially if you're trying to be faithful to the original source mm. book. Uh, this film has a shooting ratio of 60 to 1. Really? Which means that for every one minute that appears on screen, an hour was shot. Holy shit. And the movie is 154 minutes its final runtime. That's time. crazy. 
That's a lot of footage. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> 154 hours of footage. Took a lot of. You gotta give 154 it. hours of footage. Cold Mountain. It's really? Nice that, it was nice that it got nominated for best editing. Like seriously. Ooh, good God, that yeah. poor person. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 150. Um, and that just kind of blows my mind. That's yeah, that's 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 pretty darn crazy. But you know, <laughs> I, I mean, if anything, the thing I take about there's what, a great six days. Yeah. Six days long. There's Come a lot. It, it had a great cast. I'll give it that. You know, yeah. it had people like you know Philip Seymour. Hoffman, yes, Brendan Gleeson, Natalie Portman, Giovanni Ribisi, mm -hmm. all sorts of great people involved with it. And, you know, I like the sort of odyssey elements of it. It just wasn't enough to engage me throughout. Yes. But, you know, visually it looked very good. I'll say the production of it was it is a well done. It's a pretty movie. So. Which is, you know, but pretty doesn't isn't everything, no. as we see. <laughs> no, it's not everything. But also, we're going to talk about a very pretty movie after this, and that's Sky Captain exactly. in the World of Tomorrow, that's what which I'm referring to. was one of the first all CGI mm -hmm. movies along with Sin City, which I think was the same year, uh, actually. It was an, a movie, I think, called Priest or something in a different language. Immortal? Immortal, that's yeah. the one I'm thinking of. And then... I think, I think Sin City was the same year, I think too. There, I think there one, might be one other. No, Sin City was the next year. Sin City was 2005. Okay. And then, yeah, there's three that all are, like, right argued over. There, yeah. And, yeah, Immortal and Sky Captain are two of them, and I don't remember the third. It's yeah. another foreign film, I believe. From director Kerry Conran. Conran, yeah. Who wrote and directed it. Actually hasn't done anything since, which is kind nope. of shocking, because the... You know, the film isn't necessarily, I would say, my favorite. It's a, mm -mm. it's it's decent. I like the idea. It's yes. sort of like, you know, these robots start attacking mm -hmm. the world, and Jude Law and Gwyneth Paltrow are sort of sent. Or it's start, a throwback go, to 39. It's supposed to be taking yeah, place it's, in it's like a World pulp, War II. pulp action adventure yeah. sort of film. And, you know, kind they're alternate sent. Alternate future. They go to try and figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, note that they're also uh, former lovers, but they're yes. actually had a. Uh, they were the, the relationship in town to Mr. Ripley, so it's sort of yes. a reunion there. Um, and the whole thing sort of takes place on CGI soundstage. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely kind of a quirky little thing. It's really interesting, you know, as they're sort of on this hunt for this character. Uh, was it Dr. Totemkoff? Yes, that's right. Pl who was done via archival footage of... Lawrence, Lawrence Olivier, Olivier, which is yeah. kind of amazing to think about. Mm -hmm. I like I like the sort of adventure aspect of it, where they're sort of hunting these robots down, mm -hmm. and I like that ultimately the film ends up being um, I don't know if you what you want to call it a MacGuffin sort of or whatever, yeah. where Totenkopf isn't really the villain per yes. se. Yeah. He's already been dead, and uh -huh. these robots are just carrying out yeah. his mission long after he's been dead. And he it's kind of a red even, herring. Well, he also recognizes his mistake, ultimately, mm -hmm. and he has like a message in his hand that says, right, I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to do it, or whatever. <laughs> and so it's sort of interesting to sort of see that... Uh, this, after all that. After all this, this still is going on, that they're trying to destroy it and do this sort of Noah's Ark and go off into the world. And yes. it's 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 kind of a fun film. I mean, I, I think, you know, it is definitely limited by what they could do in terms of CGI, yeah, I, soundstage and stuff at the time, but I I, I don't know. I, I think I think this is one of those things that it just it sounded so good on paper and it and it was it was gonna be so pretty. And or it was so pretty, and it, but that wasn't enough. And yeah. there, I don't think there was enough holding the glue together. No, it was, it was really much more of a production design yeah. driven. I mean, film. you know, it was one of those things that's like the, one of the first movies made on Final Cut, and like the guy shot a little bit of it and chopped that around, and like yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow signed on after just seeing like six minutes or something that yeah, the guy no, had done. But uh, Kerry Conrad never went to New York City while making this film. That's fine because it's being and set there. Had never been previously been there. Uh, he digitally recreated the entire city by referring to old photographs, hmm. some of which are even inserted into the digital environments as backdrops. Wow. Originally, the plan was to have every New York City backdrop to be a colorized photograph, and that idea remained in effect until mid-production, when, when it was decided that 3D renderings of the city would allow the camera to move around more. Otherwise, it was just a bunch of picturized uh, backdrops. Not too bad. That's you know stuff like that's neat. It's too bad that didn't carry over yeah. the story. Yeah, I mean though. it's 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 kind of a, I like I like the concept. I just don't yes. love the execution. Exactly. I mean I exactly. I, I would totally if somebody were gonna do something similar, um, but you know it was a more thought out plot perhaps. Like Iron Sky. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the one you want to compare it to, <laughs> but like you still know, I haven't seen it, so I'm still. I, I thought it. you were gonna say Iron Giant or no, something like that. No, that's, you a, know, that's a good movie. Yeah, 
<laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, if somebody had sort of something sort of mm, pulpy with yes. an Iron Giant-ish I type see. character or something like that, not in this sort of like the sort of kid perspective, yeah, but you know, like it. an Iron Giant attacking a city or something. I gotcha. like, it'd be it'd be pretty cool. And I like sort of like Hindenburgs and stuff mm -hmm. in New York and all sorts Ze of. I'm a big futuristic. fan of Zeppelins. Yep, the Zeppelins. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I definitely dig that. But you know, sadly, not even nominated for any sort of production awards. Yeah. The, Sort of most noteworthy award it was nominated for was Best Kiss at the MTV Awards. <laughs> yeah, so that that speaks to it a lot. Yeah, let's move to a more current mm -hmm. film, uh, current series actually, mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, this is the Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, version Guy of Pierce it. Guy directed. Guy Ritchie or Guy Ritchie. Sorry, <laughs> that's yeah. a very different guy. Yes, this is. This is the sort of classic. Um, version of Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more modern versions of it going on. You know, the Benedict Cumberbatch mm -hmm. version, which is on BBC. Yes, That's set in modern time. I elementary think. as well with Johnny Lee Miller and Lucy Liu. Yep. Again, set in a more modern mm -hmm. time. This mm -hmm. is, I think, really the only classic one at of current contemporary. Of current world. Contemporary. I remember at the yeah. time they were making this, there was a discussion of doing a comedic version with Will Ferrell. Oh. As far as I know, that's never really seen the light of day or been done. But I mean, I, I interestingly enough, something that right off the bat tells you something about the visual tone of this film, the 221B Baker Street where they live, same house, Sirius Black's house from Prisoner really? of Azkaban. That's it's cool. Same set. That's pretty cool. And I just, I, 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 the moment you, I read that, I was like, yeah, totally, because it's, I mean, even they got the same color tone and everything. I, I mean, I will say I like the film. I won't oh say, yeah. I won't say it's a flawless film, but it's a fun action sort of adventure. I really film enjoy this film, even though it, it spits on a lot of classic Sherlock Holmes. Well, I, I mean, you, you, you can say, like, I mean, as far as I'm aware, and if there are any real hardcore Holmes enthusiasts mm -hmm, out there, mm -hmm. this is a completely new plot. Just taking yes. the Sherlock Holmes, yeah. Watson yes, characters it, yeah, through it. Takes it takes pieces from stories that existed and takes bits and pieces of some stories and puts together a new one. Right. And so, you know, I I, I think I think Robert Downey Jr. is a fantastic oh, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. I really, loved it. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love this movie, that's what I said, in spite of the fact that, like, as far as an interpretation, it's totally a new interpretation, I feel. Even though it's set in the classic sense, it's, it's a, I think, in its own way, still very fresh. I, I think, if anything, my one criticism of it is that it's more action oriented well, yeah, than sort that... of like detective oriented yeah. which is really what Holmes was about was mm -hmm. sort of like being the most brilliant yep. mind and figuring things out and I mean there's a fair amount of that oh, don't get yeah, me wrong there is but, but it's yeah. it, they definitely make it much more sort of explosive yeah. action but I set mean, pieces you know, and that's what people you know well, that's a major cr criticism of the film and I understand that especially as like I said a Sherlock Holmes fan but at the same time it's it, with Guy it's, Ritchie. It, be, it becomes a bigger so issue is, with the sequel, though. Yes, with that's Game true. of was a Game of Shadows. Game of Shadows yeah, it became much more yes, action oriented than sort Which of. Is why it wasn't as successful. But you know, I I, I like I like the cast. Mm -hmm. I like I like the visuals. I like the atmosphere. I mean, I even being set in the same time, you can tell from the get go that Guy Ritchie wanted to make something different because as soon as he signed on, he insisted that the two most common cliches of Sherlock Holmes, the line "Elementary, my dear Watson," and the deer hunter or deer deer stalker cap, uh, he dropped. He's like, nope, I'm not doing those two things because they were. You know, so, I mean, from the get-go right there, you're at least trying to break away from the tradition of making just a, a port of the character, which is why I was okay with it being more of an action film. You know what? I will say another downer for me is the um, interpretation of Moriarty. I think that they did okay with this mm. in Game of Shadows. Um, I wish they had had Moriarty, a bigger player. He was just a, a footnote in this movie. That's right, yeah, because they're setting it up for the sequel. But I, I, I think... Like the BBC iteration of Moriarty oh, yeah. is much, much better than anything they did oh, in this yeah. movie, and it just, it, it, I just, I wish they they really could do more with that character in the Guy Ritchie series. Mm, so. Yes, it's true. I'm just saying, I wish they had done more. Still a very fun film, and yeah. Jude Law is a great Watson. And uh, sure, uh, Robert Downey Jr. won the Golden Globe for best comedy musical for Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> it's considered a comedy musical. It's a comedy. I would uh, say it's a comedy. Oh, so that's comedy, comma, musical. Not comedy, comedy slash musical. musical. Okay. No. no. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. That's that's like, <laughs> that's uh, I was very confused. I was like, when did I miss a, Did I fall asleep during that movie and I didn't realize it? No, 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 no. no. Well, so, you're right. It is can 
Yeah. Name it. So anyway, that brings us to yeah. this Friday, yeah. November 16th. <laughs> We're talking Anna Karenina. Yes. As I said, that yeah. is actually what it is. It's not just Karina or uh, something. Yeah. Karina, Karina. <laughs> the Whoopi Goldberg movie. No, no, no. <laughs> this is from director Joe Wright. Mm -hmm. Set in the late 19th century Russian high society, the aristocrat Anna Karenina enters into a life-changing affair with affluent Count Vronsky. Mm. Who's played by Aaron Johnson? Oh, nice. From Savages. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This and kick ass. Yes, and kick ass. This is uh, her husband is played by Jude Law. Okay. Alexei Karenin. I don't know what the Karenina is. Maybe that's the fem. I guess it's the feminine version of Karenin. Probably. I mean, I don't know. I guess they changed their last names. I. Good to know about I, Russia. I'm not. A, Lessons learned. I'm not Russian. But unfortunately. Essentially, you know, it's a story of, like, a married woman who falls in love with this bachelor who, you know, she has to decide about leaving her husband. You know, mm -hmm. upon leaving her husband, she's sort of shunned from society. Gotcha. You know, she has to deal with sort of the Very challenges. Very Jane Austen in Russia type yeah, story. I could sort of say something like that. This is Victorian from... Victorian era. Leon Leo Toys, Tolstoy. Tolstoy, yes. Yep. Okay, yes. Famous Russian author. It's got, I mean, it's got a great cast, you know, you got... Kira Knightley, who has done a lot of work successfully with period uh, pieces with Joe Wright, who That's right. he also directed Pride and Prejudice yep. and Atonement, mm -hmm. which he's received a lot of That's right, yeah. praise for. Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen. You got Kelly McDonald from mm -hmm. Brave. Yep. You got Emily Watson, Olivia Williams, Ooh, Matthew great, McFadden. Great actresses. Yeah, great actors. You know, it's probably not something high on my list of movies to see, no. but it it looks nope. interesting, and I I think. Knowing Joe Wright, it's probably going to be a pretty solid period piece. It's, yes. And Tolstoy is a pretty beloved writer, so if yes. they, they succeed at all capturing yeah. that atmosphere. If they can get like even a, a portion of it, considering how much period pieces go like gangbusters these days, because special effects, we yeah. can just recreate all the backgrounds. So, totally. so um, I'm curious to hear the feedback from mm -hmm, it once it comes mm -hmm. out. So We like Jude Law. We do. We like Jude Law. It's you know, okay. all sorts of stuff like uh, Road of Perdition, etc. Uh -huh. that we could have talked about, but we didn't, you know. Yep. There's lots of stuff that we could talk about. Mr. Ripley, obviously, we yeah. talked about a little. So let, let us know what you like of his. Obviously, there's so many we couldn't talk about them all, and I'd yes. like to hear your feedback on that one. And uh, join us next week for our DVD rundown for the week of November 20th. 20th. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Crazy. Um, Thanksgiving yeah, week. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving week. We'll be giving some thanks with DVD rundown. <laughs> woo, -ha! woo -ha! Before Black Friday. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let us know your feedback at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, mm -hmm. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842, iTunes, Blip.tv, yes. Roku, Miro. Check in to get glue. Get some badges. Yeah, get yeah. some sticky. You thought Always you were going to get away sticky. with it. Always with the sticky. <laughs> we'll see you next time. can't stop me. can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the size of The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it fe